All right, here we go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to How Stuff Works first ever Google Hangout. Uh, we're here live to answer some questions and, you know, hang out, if you will, if you would. Let's assume you did. You're here. So I'm Ben Bolin. I uh, host a couple of shows, stuff they don't want you to know, car stuff, a couple of other things. And uh, I'm joined by some extended members of the How Stuff Works podcasting family. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Okay, Josh, you want to go first? <laughs> yeah, I'm Josh Clark. I am one half of the uh, podcast Stuff You Should Know. Bam. Uh, I'm Chuck. I'm the other half. Hey, Chuck. Uh, I'm Jonathan Strickland, and I am host of Forward Thinking as well as tech stuff. Uh, hello? Hello? Can you all hear me? I'm Kristen. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm Kristen, host of Stuff Mom Never Told You. And that's it. <laughs> uh, I'm Robert Lamb, and I'm the uh, one of the co-hosts of Stuff to Blow Your Mind. All right, so that, that's all of us here today. Um, what we're going to be doing is going across a couple of different fronts. We have some questions that uh, you guys have asked us that we've uh, written down here. We've also got uh, some questions we'll be pulling live from the YouTube chat. And if you want to uh, log in and ask us some questions in person, in like in digital personhood, then uh, feel free. So I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with one from Dustin Beanton, Beinton. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, Dustin. I hope we're still cool if I'm not. Uh, okay, so here we go, guys. Dustin says, I've got a question in case I can't make it. Do you think that tech lovers and theater music lovers go well together, or is it rare? It seems like a lot of tech people I know like both. Jonathan, I'm going to throw that to you. This sounds like it's up your alley. Uh, I would say that tech lovers and um, theater lovers are, uh, you know, sometimes that's a Venn diagram that has overlap, and right there in the middle you got me, because I love tech and I love jazz hands, so, uh, you know, but it's not necessarily, I don't, I don't know that there's a one-to-one -one connection, but uh, certainly a lot of the people I know who are tech journalists are also really big into theater and, and also just music in general, not just musical theater, but, but music. Uh, a lot of the folks I know used to, who work in tech journalism now, had jobs as radio DJs, and then they moved on to becoming tech gurus. So uh, I don't know that there's a direct connection, but it's certainly something that does happen. So it's interesting as well when we're, um, now Dustin, no offense, but I'm kind of wondering if this is a question that might be related to some dating. I don't know. So with with that in mind, uh, does anybody have uh, anybody have some advice about bridging the worlds of tech and theater for Dustin? I'll, I'll say this: uh, being a guy and being in theater is a great way to meet girls. <laughs> uh, for everybody who doesn't know, uh, Jonathan is uh, quite the actor as well as being a tech guru. He's also uh, so, he's also uh, married. 16 oh, years, so. Yeah. That out oh, too. bummer. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I was upset, too. I'm kidding. Uh, all right, so our next question is from Twinkle Sharma. Twinkle Sharma says, okay, here goes my first question. When do you say a person is intelligent? Is it that a person who can crack the difficult rocket science questions is more intelligent than a person, say, who is a performing artist? And do you think if a person is studying both rocket scientists and is rocket science and is a good performing artist, they have a very different intelligence skill? Uh, that's interesting to me because that reminds me of the theory of multiple intelligences, which I think some of you guys are familiar with, right? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I would argue that there are many different definitions to the word intelligence, just like we don't have a firm uh, definition of what consciousness is. Intelligence, if you ask two different people, you're going to get two very different answers. Uh, whether or not intelligence is how many facts you know or how well you apply those facts to practical situations or how well you navigate through a social landscape, all of those are different 
aspects of intelligence. You know, um, I've always, we have a boss here at HowStuffWorks named Connell Byrne, and he once said that intellect is taking two seemingly unrelated ideas and putting them together. And that's always just kind of stuck with me. Like, I think that's the perfect definition of, of intelligence. And I don't even think Connell's watching this right now. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he may be, well, he may well be watching, excuse me. I, I never know. But for everyone who doesn't know uh, <laughs> Connell Bird, I do have to point out that in addition to being pretty hilarious, he's, he's like full of quotes. He's a walking sort of fortune cookie factory. He's better than I am at quotes. I, I wish uh, I wish I could write fortune cookies. That's what I would be doing if I wasn't here uh, with a question from uh, Gary Powell. This is an interesting question, you guys. Do you think World War III could start soon? That's that's tough. I don't know about predictions there. Thirty something years. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yes, you like the, that uh, I do like that. I do like that. <laughs> it's a very cheerful, you know, rainbow connection kind of way of looking at the world. Right. Yeah, I guess you're always ready, huh, Josh? Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm ready, ready to go. Okay, so it looks like we've got some uh, other people who have joined the. Uh, chat here. Um, we're going to, while we're waiting for some questions to go in, I'm going to move on to uh, just one more of the text questions before we go to one of our live people. Uh, this is a pretty cool question. Uh, Marshall Rittinger writes in to say, whose idea was it to expand HowStuffWorks.com into the podcasting arena? How and by whom were hosts chosen for each podcast? Josh, you want to take that? You were in the first one. Yeah, Josh was uh, the very first podcaster. Well, again, it was um, it was actually it was Connell Byrne, uh, who's not paying me to mention him. And actually, my wife's mad at me because she swears that she's the one that told me that that's the definition of intellect. But I heard it from Connell too. But he was the one who said, "You know what? We are uh, we've got like all this really awesome, uh, all these articles on the site, like tens of thousands of articles, at least ten thousand articles, but possibly tens of thousands." Um, and he said, let's figure out a way to get them out to people who are like, I hate reading, but I love listening, and uh, hence the podcasts. It was a good idea. It panned out pretty well. Yeah, and it changed a little bit on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, after after uh, you began, Josh, we also had some people who <coughs> came up with their own ideas for shows. Like, uh, I think Robert and Kristen, you guys both... Um, you guys both created this idea for your own shows and uh, brought it to the masses. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I actually started Stuff Mom Never Told You because, um, or pitched it at least, because at the time I was writing almost exclusively animal content. And by, by content, I made articles. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to do a podcast about animals, so I decided to pitch one to the brilliant Connell Byrne about women. And he loved that idea. After, after a while, maybe. Uh, ben, I had to audition, actually. I don't know if you knew that. What? Really? Yes, I had to audition for Josh, and I did a scene from Henry V. And Josh, uh, you know, got out his megaphone. He said, you've got the job, kid. And that was <laughs> how I got in there. Was it the Did once you? once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more? Exactly. No, I didn't say that. That scene. <laughs> And, and it's kind of weird uh, with that story because I think he was using the megaphone in a pretty small room at the time, right? Yeah, well, it was in the broom closet here at work, so yeah, pretty <laughs> small. Yeah, do you remember how big the studio was back then? It was like you pretty much had to stand up elbow to elbow with Jerry to record. And there was like a, a jute rug hanging from the wall. And yeah. um, it was like a, a very small dorm room. There was like patchouli. It was terrible. But it was cozy and nice. That's pretty cool. I've got, um, <laughs> let's see, I've got a, I've got, uh, we should point out also that now we've changed our studio stuff pretty extensively. I mean, we have 
two studios now. So look at us. We're like rolling with the podcast swells, right? Okay, this is more of a scientific question. Uh, if uh, Twinkle Sharma again has uh, written to ask, uh, why is a moving why is a moving particle associated with a wave packet rather than a single wave train? Robert and, Lamb, uh, everyone. <laughs> I think we can go with uh, either Robert or Jonathan for this one. I'm going to defer to Jonathan on this one. Um, <laughs> Ooh, pass. Pass. <laughs> Strickland? Repeat the question for us there, Ben. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll repeat the question. So, uh, Jonathan, the question is, uh, why is a moving particle associated with a wave packet rather than a single wave train? Gotcha. Well, if I can jump in here, I, th I think a moving particle can associate with whatever it wants to. That's <laughs> basically my philosophy on the whole thing. Okay, what about, uh, well, wave train and wave, uh, wave packet are synonymous, so really it's, it's, you're talking about pretty much the same thing. Uh, in mathematics, a wave packet is very different than what it is in physics. But if you're talking quantum physics, wave packet essentially refers to the probability wave that a particle will exist at a certain position and momentum. Uh, because of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, we know we cannot for certain know a particle's position and momentum. We can only know probabilities. And so, um, and so we know the probability of a particle's momentum and position within a certain range. That range is described by a probability wave, also known as a wave packet. Thank you. That was pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I've talked um, a lot about quantum physics recently. It's the only reason I know that. Oh, yeah. Uh, for everyone who hasn't, I'm going to plug your show, Jonathan. I hope you're okay with that. Uh, forward thinking is pretty exciting. I'm not even being paid to say that. I actually watch it in my free time. Uh, and <laughs> what? Uh, here's one. Uh, this is a little bit different question here uh, from Insanity Tripping. Wants to know which will come first, zombie or singularity, and which are you most scared of? So uh, this zombies and singularities are think are things that we've covered in multiple shows. Is that right? That's right. I mean, um, I would say though that that zombies here in Atlanta are already a thing especially any weekend when Walking Dead's filming. So, Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, I would Walking say Dead. Um, I would be way more fearful of sentient, ultra-intelligent robots uh, over a shambling, already dead human being any day of the week. As a matter of fact, if you're not scared of the singularity right now, you need to wake up. I don't know. I tend to think a more benevolent approach to it. I mean, could they really do a worse job than humans are doing by and large? I think I think they I think the argument is maybe that they could at least do as well or as bad. Right. But a zombie is a human who failed and just got a second chance basically. <laughs> or a human that's infected with a parasite that is utilizing the human body to continue a life cycle through other organisms. Yeah, that's another way to put it. <laughs> I want to hear I want to hear Kristen's point of view on this. My point of view on it, um, I'm going to go with, you know what, I like Josh's theory uh, about how we should be scared of singularity. I'm terrified right now. Uh, Josh, thank you for calling my attention to that. Um, and yes, nice. and that's what it is. I yeah. see this. This explains why I'm doing I the technology. I for Josh Clark. That is my. That is my opinion. <laughs> this this explains why I'm doing the technology podcast because I'm the one who's not scared of te technology. Yet, no. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, we also have a question from uh, Matt X. This is specifically for you, Chuckers. Uh, Chuck, when can we uh, expect to see your band play in Atlanta again? Uh, you know, we actually played the other weekend in my basement, and we were talking about getting the show together soon. So uh, we'll do that, and no one will ever know about it. <laughs> that sounds like it should be on my show. Jeez. No, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll announce <laughs> the next little show. It's, it's just our friends and family, so you guys might as well show up too, you know. We're, we're not uh, a real band. Oh, come on. All right, so uh, here's one from Hunter Bead. 
B-Day, right? again, and doing my best with the names. Uh, this is for everybody, okay? So each, each of our podcasters should answer this one. Uh, what is your favorite inspirational quote? I think it's tough to pick one favorite out of anything, so maybe we all have like a favorite quote or one of our top ten that we like to say. Uh, we can start with, do you want to start, Chuck? Yeah, um, I don't know the exact quote, but, but it's uh, part of the Sierra Clubs. Uh, I think John Muir said it, something about going to the tops of the mountains and uh, getting a lot out of that experience. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't remember the exact quote, and I don't want to be disingenuous and like type and look it up right now. But uh, yeah, I'm a big out, outdoor naturalist type, and, and so that really speaks to me. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's. I'm going down the list here. Uh, Kristen, do you have one? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's so much like the like inspirational quote as you would think of it, but um, that something that I take into podcasting stuff. I've never told you that I like to keep in mind is something that I read from uh, Jesse Thorne, who does the Bullseye podcast and has the whole podcast network. Um, he talks a lot about making your thing and the emphasis on making your thing and making it over again and owning your work and all that stuff. So make your thing is my, <laughs> is my thing. Actually, <laughs> his thing. All right. Uh, let's go to Jonathan. You got one? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I'll go with uh, Shakespeare. Uh, if brevity is the soul of wit and tediousness the limbs and outward flourishes, I will be brief. Because I'm just, <laughs> I'm just as brief as Polonius is, who never shuts up. <laughs> Uh, okay, I like that one. Uh, but Josh, what do you have? Um, I don't know if my favorite quote's um, inspirational, but I'm reminded of an Emo Phipps joke. He says, in the words of my late father, a truck. That's always <laughs> been my favorite quote. <laughs> uh, uh, what about you, Robert? Uh, one of my favorite comes from Grant Morrison, um, who said, uh, your head's like mine, like all our heads, big enough to contain every god and devil there ever was, big enough to hold the weight of oceans and the turning stars. Whole universes fit in there. But what do we choose to keep in this miraculous cabinet? Little broken things, sad trinkets that we play with over and over. The world turns our key, and we play the same little tune again and again, and we think that that tune is all we are. Nice. I think That's Robert really was reading good. off of the I was interview. reading that. I was totally reading that. Hey, thanks for calling <laughs> me first there, Ben. I appreciate that. <laughs> it was the flow of the conversation, Chuck. I'm sorry. Uh, just, I think mine it, is now. I'm going to change my answer. It's, hey, bud, let's party. From <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, let's see. I, I kind of caught myself out. I guess I cheated a little bit by uh, going last. I have quite a few quotations that I really enjoy. Um, I think it was Somerset Maugham who said, uh, a quotation is an excellent substitute for wit or something like that. Uh, and I always think about that um, because it made me feel better about being so bad at quotations. And my, one of my real favorite quotations is actually kind of embarrassing um, because there's, this, uh, there's a group called uh, Dead Prez, and one of their things that really stayed with me, I know, I know, I know, it's pretty good though, is... Um, your life is a series of serious choices. Form your theories from experience, never mysterious forces. And I thought that, you know, it was well written. It's got a little bit of a flow to it. And it made a pretty good point. Uh, so, let's see. What do you think about graphing, guys? Because Balds wants to know. Baldis. About graphing as in a sheet of one atom thick carbon atoms? Is that what we're talking about so. here? I, I think, think it's so. pretty... It's a it's it's pretty awesome stuff. I mean, you you can uh, you can roll that up in different ways and make carbon nanotubes. And depending upon the way you roll it, uh, the carbon nanotube will have a completely different set of uh, features. So you can have it where it's a really effective semiconductor, or you can roll it a different way and make it stronger but lighter than steel. So it's pretty neat stuff. Do you think it'll? Uh what kind of impact do you think it'll have on the future of material science? It's going to have an incredibly disruptive effect on material science. We're going to see it used in, we're already seeing them used in lots of different ways, but we're going to see them used in everything from microprocessor manufacturing to 
Uh, the possibility of space elevators sometime down the line, although there are a lot of people who argue that carbon nanotubes aren't really going to measure up to what we will need to make a space elevator work. But uh, yeah, it's got amazing potential. So we're, we're going to have to see how that shakes out uh, probably in the next, uh, next few decades, maybe. Would that be a fair time frame? I would say within the next, yeah, within the next decade or two, there are also some other issues. I mean, that's we're not we're not very good at making carbon nanotubes right now. It's it's not a very fast process, though. As more and more people get interested in it, we're going to see those manufacturing processes improve. And also, there are some uh, health risks too. There's some there's a potential link between carbon nanotubes and uh, and cancer. So clearly, that would need to be something we'd have to really explore before we could just, you know, roll out carbon nanotubes and everything. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, also, now, oh wait, and now for something completely different, uh, Kristen, Madeline Burchard wants to know uh, if your mom liked the cake you made for her. Uh, okay, well, spoiler alert, my mom never got that cake, <laughs> A, because it was disgusting, and I know that it was disgusting because I eat it. I eat a piece of it in um, an upcoming video for Mother's Day. It, I'm glad my mom didn't get the cake because it, it, it was horrible. So really that might be like one of your best Mother's Day presents tours, the absence of the cake? I'm going to give her a video in which I show her that I'm making her a cake and then take her out to brunch instead. I think that's awesome. Anyway. Uh, okay, uh, another question for Kristen. Uh, Sarah Minette writes in to say, uh, "Hey, Kristen, Hello. why did you? Hey, why did you decide to do a podcast for women?" Um, well, like I said uh, earlier um, in the hangout, the initial inspiration came kind of out of desperation because. At the time when we were coming up with a lot of the different writers of How Stuff Works were um, getting involved with podcasting, and a lot of it related to whatever they were writing about at the time. And uh, when podcasting was getting off the ground, I was writing a lot about animals. And though I have nothing against animals, there's a black lab behind me. Um, I didn't want to do a podcast on that. So I got together with my original co-host, Molly Edmonds, and we said, hey, what would we like to listen to? Well something about us because yeah um, so we pitched something about uh, targeted towards women and thankfully got the green light to do it and here's where we go to a uh, question for everybody um, which podcast do you guys listen to uh, that's from Nick show and Chuck since I, I apologize for sabotaging earlier um, I will I will go on first this time I guess that's fair play and say that I listen to uh, the Economist I listen to uh, BBC's Global News I listen to um, Mark Marin and actually I listen to every single podcast that How Stuff Works does it it can be a it can be a lot but uh, I think they're interesting. That's it. Uh, that's all I've got. Uh, I guess we'll start with uh, Robert. What uh, other podcasts do you listen to? Well, most of the podcasts that I listen to are, are music. Um, I mean, I listen to Radio Lab. I will listen to the uh, the odd uh, Moth or uh, Risk uh, if when I'm in the mood for a storytelling type podcast. But mostly, I listen to things like Solid Steel Radio, um, uh, XLR, AR uh, podcast. Uh, a whole bunch of music podcasts, really. Awesome. Josh, what, uh, do you have some particular favorite podcasts? Um, yeah, I don't get to listen to them as often as I'd like, but uh, I do listen to Radiolab as well, This American Life, just to kind of like keep an eye on things. Um, that's that's pretty much it. It'll just be like I'll, I'll pick something up, I'll try something new here or there, um, but I, I rarely get around to subscribing as, as frequently as I can because I've learned that they, they tend to build up more than I want. So, um, But I am fans of a lot of different podcasts. I like everything Jesse Thorne does. Um, and I like uh, WTF as well. Good interviewing. Yeah, he's pretty good at it. Uh, and he's got a new show coming out. I, I haven't seen it yet. I don't know if anybody else has. Uh, Jonathan, podcast. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I listen to several How Stuff Works podcasts, but I also listen to Coverville, which is a music podcast all about cover songs done by Brian Ibbett. Uh, I listen to The Morning Stream, which has Brian Ibbett and Scott Johnson on it. It's from the Frog Pants Network. Uh, Tech News Today, which is Tom Merritt, Aya Zaktar, and Sarah Lane. That do They do tech news, obviously. Uh, and I also listen to the Rooster Teeth podcast, which is... Uh, the guys who do Red vs. Blue and Achievement Hunter, they have a podcast that comes out every week that's uh, hilarious and not appropriate to listen to at work. <laughs> uh, Kristen, what about you? Okay, yeah, I'm um, looking at my uh, at my Stitcher app. And um, among, yeah, I mean, I do all the How Stuff Works podcasts, of course, and the NPR favorites and such. Um, but some in my favorites playlist include... Professor Blast Off throwing shade. How was your week with Julie Klausner? Is I'm uh, I have a mild obsession with her and her podcast, uh, Savage Lovecast. You know that kind of stuff. Nice, uh, Chuck. What do you think? You got some podcasts? I don't want to. Uh, yeah, I'm a big uh, Judge John Hodgman fan, um, as well as Jesse Thorne's um, Bullseye and Jordan Jesse Go. And uh, Improv for Humans with Matt Besser is funny. And uh, Matt Walsh has a funny one about the Chicago Bears called Bear Down. I'm not even a fan of the Chicago Bears. It's just fun and funny to hear Matt Walsh talk about football. Uh, and then, like Robert, I listen to a lot of music stuff, uh, NPR, uh, Tiny Desk concerts, and uh, stuff like that. And I, Mark, I remember two too. more. I have two more. Okay, yeah, knock them out. So, uh, Roman Mars does one called 99% Invisible that's awesome that I forgot to mention I'm a fan of. And I've literally just now been turned on to one called Uh Yeah Dude. So, those two I wanted to add. And uh, I think also John Hodgman has made a couple of appearances on Stuff You Should Know uh, in a couple of hilarious turns. That, do you guys remember the one where he's talking about like the invisible milk snake that's a credit card or something? In fact, I do. That was John's always fun, and uh, uh, fans write in and uh, like him a lot, or want to throw tomatoes at his face. So it's always fun. <laughs> um, and then the uh, oh, I wanted to add one. The um, Right Club Atlanta has a uh, pretty cool podcast going to Robert's point about the uh, story podcast. If you listen, if you feel like hearing a story, and you check out um, Moth or something like that. Um, I've never competed in Right Club Atlanta or anything like that, but I, I think that it's a, it's a heck of a show. So, and you should do that. You'd be good at that. Oh, thanks, Chuck. You'd be good at it. Uh, all right, so let's go with uh, like just some quick – this is an either-or question. Okay, guys, this is going to move really quickly. And, Chuck, I am going to start with you. Sorry. Vampires or werewolves? Uh, repeat the question. <laughs> uh, good question from uh, Sarah Minette. Vampires or werewolves? Oh, um, well, I mean, I'm not going to base this on the Twilight thing because I don't care about that particular uh, series. But um, I'm going to go with werewolves just because vampires are kind of um, uh, too many vampires out right now. So I'd like to see another really good werewolf movie and not uh, the Benicio Del Toro Wolfman wasn't so great, so... I'd like to see a good werewolf thing. Okay. What, uh, what about you, Kristen? I'm going to go with vampires because um, opposite of Chuck, I base all of my decisions off of <laughs> Stephanie Meyer's Twilight series. So, yeah. I, think that, I think that's legit. It's, uh, it's never led me astray. It's your own team, Edward. <laughs> I, guess, I guess so, yeah. Or whatever his name is. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jonathan, vampires or werewolves? Come back to me. I'm still thinking. I understand. I understand. Uh, <laughs> Josh, uh, uh, what's I your like take? Both. I don't see why everybody has to choose sides or decide. It's like both. That's yeah, kind of the way the question's framed. Um, Talk about it, forward thinking. <laughs> but Josh, Josh, though, if there were a battle between a vampire and a werewolf, who would you put money on to win? Uh, um... Uh, 
I would probably just put even money on both. <laughs> <laughs> because to, to do otherwise would be discriminatory. You know? right. I think the, I think a, a question that I would ask you, Kristen, for that is uh, what type of vampire, or which type of vampire, which type of werewolf, and what currency are we talking? Because oh, God. A, <laughs> Bitcoin. A yeah, that's right, um. Bitcoin. <laughs> okay, Robert, um, Robert, I know that you and I are both uh, really into monsters. So I wanted to give you some time as well to ponder. Are you ready to answer vampire or werewolf? Um, yes, I, I would tend to go with vampires, but only because there's still so much out there in world folk, folklore and mythology regarding vampire. There's a lot of variety in the vampire myth that is rarely expressed in uh, popular culture, um, whereas the werewolf uh, myth is largely um, stripped there. So I, I would go with vampires, but... Uh, like I said, people need to actually um, get into some of these uh, these older ideas and more elaborate ideas of what a vampire consists of and run with those. Yeah, like world world myths about vampires are fascinating. There's someone is going to make billions of dollars with some more creative vampire movies. Jonathan. Okay, <clears throat> I got to come down on Nosferatu and not Lycanthrop. So, vampires. I respect your decision, Jonathan. Screen uh, punch. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> okay, so uh, Robert Paulson writes in on our chat to uh, say, is that Chuck Squatter Rights land in the background? Yes, actually. If you look over oh, there, behind, <laughs> behind that fence is the Squatter's land, and then from the palm tree back. You look like Jennifer Connelly in Requiem for a Dream, Chuck. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. <laughs> well, Isn't that lovely? The, the early part of the movie where things are still okay. Yeah. Spoiler, <laughs> Not spoiler that early. alert. For a given <laughs> definition of okay. <laughs> so, okay yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's the squatted land, like the back third. Uh, okay, uh, here's one that I think is for everybody. I'm just going to toss it out to us. Uh, Groovy Kool-Aid writes to say, how do you think the internet is shaping education and learning? Uh, what do you think of YouTube education? Edu education. <laughs> well, I just did a uh, podcast on this, uh, the Tech Stuff podcast, about online education. And uh, I think that if you're talking about formal education, we still have a long way to go. Uh, there, there are some good online universities out there, or at least universities that offer up classes online where you can get official credit. But there are also a lot of uh, a lot of schools where the credit may not be uh, accepted universally. So uh, I think I think we're still kind of heading in that direction. The nice thing is, if you want to take really awesome classes. Uh, but you don't care that you're not going to get credit for it. There are a lot of universities out there that offer up some of their most important coursework for free. So like MIT has got a lot of classes that you can actually take online for free. And I've done that a couple of times with uh, chemistry classes uh, specifically when I needed to refresh my, my memory on uh, various uh, chemistry properties. So that... I think it's I think it's good, but we're not it's not great yet. Okay. What well, um has anybody else been trying that? Jonathan, that's really cool that you're researching chemistry properties. I mean I think nothing suspicious about that. Yeah. I <laughs> well, <laughs> got you some forward thinking guys. <laughs> Just saying. We got um, we got zombie singularity right around the corner. <laughs> um Okay, so uh, here's, a, here's a question we'll throw out also to everybody. Uh, Sally Burns writes in to say, what is the most exciting opportunity that you have gotten because of your podcasting that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten? I guess we can go around the room with that one, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, wanna, uh, Robert, we'll start with you. Uh, so uh, uh, can you also introduce your cat? Oh, this is Biscuit. Uh, she insists on sitting in front of laptops, sometimes on them. Um, Biscuit. <laughs> uh, as far as exciting opportunities, I don't know. I guess uh, I've enjoyed getting to uh, um, you know attend the the uh, 
New York Science Festival, uh, the World Science Festival in New York, uh, a couple of times. That's that's always fun. Uh, we got to do some stuff with Discovery Education, going out and uh, speaking uh, at a, a conference in uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, so that was that was pretty good. Um, those are the main points, the main high highlights there. Okay, and uh, Jonathan, what about you? Uh, I'd say that um, the coolest opportunity that came up for me was, uh, although it, it, it didn't air, was to shoot an episode of uh, The Curiosity Project, which was pretty neat. I got to go up to New York and be a part of that. It never it never made it to air, uh, but it was, uh, it was a really awesome opportunity. I've also had a lot of cool opportunities of, of being able to show up on other people's podcasts. Uh, it's one of the nice things about the podcast community is I think overall they tend to be really supportive of each other. So uh, there have been times where a lot of the people I consider my peers in the podcast world have asked me to be on a show. In one case, uh, Josh, who came up behind me and uh, pulled me onto a podcast about Cthulhu and the Necronomicon. I came up behind you and tapped you on the shoulder. Yes, you did. Um, yeah, we were doing a, an episode on the Necronomicon, which is H.P. Lovecraft's possibly, possibly not fictitious uh, book written by, um, I can't remember the guy's name, the Mad Arab is what they call him. Abdul Hazred. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and uh, we, we realized as we were getting like about five minutes into the episode that we really needed Strickland, who is like a, a de facto expert on all things Lovecraft. And so we went and grabbed him, and uh, he sat in and just basically did the third co-host thing. No rehearsal, no warning, no nothing. He was just sitting there at his desk, and, and we dragged him in. It worked out pretty well. Yeah. I'm imagining you, Josh, like forcibly <laughs> dragging Jonathan in. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was like, hey, we have a third mic. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, what Josh did first was he came up and asked me how to pronounce Cthulhu's home of Rillie. And then he asked me a second question. I think it was about the Mad Arab. And the third time you said, all right, forget it. You're just coming into this. <laughs> and I said, all right, awesome. It was yeah. great. It didn't take it, much arm no. twisting, Kristen. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, for the record. So uh, let's, uh, let's pass the question um, to Chuck. Sorry, I was muted. What was the original question? Uh, Cthulhu? <laughs> no. You, you know what? Tell me we're werewolf. <laughs> um, it was, what is the most exciting No, I was just kidding. Oh. Um, I mean, I, I would say definitely, you know, Josh and I were lucky enough to get an opportunity to try TV uh, with Science Channel, and it was definitely the most fun I've ever had uh, working. Um, it's, it's, it was a great time, and that was definitely the coolest thing I've, I've gotten to do. Uh, Kristen? Um, I'm going to offer a little bit of a sappy answer, Ben. Um, I mean, I've gotten like cool opportunities as far as uh, getting up and speaking in front of people and collaborating with people and stuff. Um, but I would say from our podcast, the coolest thing for me is, is really hearing from uh, listeners who are willing to send in very personal and heartwarming stories and I don't know it's just it's it's really it's really nice to hear from folks who take time out of their day to listen to me talk about things so that's it's it's a pretty nice perk I don't think that's necessarily sappy that's a really nice answer I think it's cool Thanks, uh, so I'm just Josh. shallow <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one, Josh? Uh, me? Uh, I can say I've met a lot of actually really cool people who uh, I guess wouldn't have known me or Chuck otherwise had we not had the podcast like Hodgman, um, Wyatt Sinak, uh, YouTube, I mean, just some very neat people, um, some of whom I, I count among my friends now, which is cool. Um, of course, the TV show was really awesome. Um, and uh, I think the, the thing that, like, Really, there were two things that really just stuck out to me. One, <clears throat> um, I was kind of raised on these books called The Bathroom Readers, Uncle John's Bathroom Reader. And we actually had um, the guy who was the founder of these books that, like, lent themselves to my education in, in a really strange roundabout way, but just becoming, like, a, the curious person I am um, on Stuff You Should Know. So it came, like, full circle. That was a huge one for me. And then also I was interviewed in um, 
my hometown newspaper, the Toledo Blade. So all those like, there, it's there's a whole big old like wheelbarrow full of cool stuff that that I've been able to do. I know Chuck has been able to to thanks to stuff you should know. So uh, I guess I'll answer the question as well. I um I don't want to sound shallow. I love all the answers every, everybody else was giving, and I I agree with a lot of them. It's always there's something you know. There, there's something profoundly cool about people who do take the time out of their day to write in and say, you know, I enjoyed this, I would like to hear more about this, or to tell you uh, personal stories about their life. Also, I have not bought a t-shirt since 2008 when I started working at How Stuff Works. I've like, I have never, bought, I think I'm wearing one now, but um, that's that's probably an amazing opportunity I have is I'm out of the t-shirt game, you guys, entirely. Um, <laughs> you, guys you should buy some new t-shirts, though. I've been meaning uh, to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I saw the note on the coffee machine, Chuck. All okay, right? good. You have unique handwriting. Um, okay, so you guys want to do a hypothetical question? Sure. Sure. Go for it. Okay. So wait, yeah, the girl night. Night. vampire question wasn't hypothetical? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just wait, Josh. Okay. Just wait. Uh, so, okay, uh, Gangsta Gabe Seven writes in to say, if you guys ever got in a quibble, who would be the one to start it and who to finish? That's I don't think I've. Question. I don't think I've ever been in any sort of uh, real disagreement or debate with anybody on here. I would say that if, out of the people who are here, Josh would be the one most likely to get into a, a, a totally fake argument that no one could possibly win. It really, everyone loses because Josh and I will play chicken and neither of us will swerve. So everyone loses in that, in that respect. It's, it's true. Although I both like Kevin Bacon and Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Josh? I said I usually win anyway. Okay. All right. Well, I'll, don't. I'll concede. I'll concede. <laughs> See, did, did, I just was, won. No, you got out. That was classy. Jonathan wins by class, by by class metric. Um, yes, all right, I win so, by being pushy. <laughs> um, to tell you guys uh, the truth, uh, to Jonathan's earlier point about how supportive the podcasting world is, it's it's pretty impressive because uh, we do often uh, work with each other on various things. Uh, uh, if, you, uh, if you're a fan of Stuff You Missed in History class, uh, then you might recall that there was a time when people from several different shows were coming in and guest hosting. And um, I don't know, it's, it's really fortunate to, uh, legit, for me at least, to legitimately uh, like and enjoy the company of everybody that I work with. Um, yeah, literally everybody. Uh, we have... Uh, Another question here. Uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, Jane Hatter is writing to us to say, what did you guys want to be when you grew up? I'm assuming that a 10-year-old Chuck or a 12-year-old Josh wasn't dreaming of being a podcaster, uh, though you guys have such great jobs, she adds. Uh, my parents were both teachers, so I was sort of uh, didn't have a career in mind, and that was always in the back of my mind as an English major. Um, but then I, I didn't end up doing that because I pursued creative pursuits and waited tables for a long time while I did that. But um, I would say teacher in, in a roundabout way I've sort of ended up doing that. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josh? Uh, I wanted to be a writer ever since uh, definitely early elementary school. And so getting hired at How Stuff Works to be a writer was like, okay, well, I've achieved my goal. This is pretty awesome. And then just kept getting better and better from there. Uh, Kristen, what about you? Um, I always wanted to be a writer, but I did go through <laughs> phases where I wanted to be a nurse uh, until I realized, well, that would, well, I don't know. And then uh, I wanted to be an architect briefly until I realized I couldn't draw. And, um, but always a writer, no matter what. Uh, Jonathan? I never wanted to be a writer because uh, my dad's a writer and I saw what they got paid. But um, uh, actually, when I, when I was a kid, I really wanted, as a little kid, I really wanted to be a marine biologist. That was my thing. I really wanted to do it. 
And then uh, as I got further and further into my studies, I actually did start to enjoy uh, creative writing more. And then uh, I thought by the time I got into college that I was going to go into education. And then I saw I, I, I ended up working in a, a university for a while on the administrative side. And uh, I, I saw how tough it was to be uh, a teacher. And it was really, really hard. And I questioned whether or not I had it in me to do it. And that was... Uh, when I, I eventually came up to the realization that it was not the right path for me, then I spent several years kind of languishing in various jobs until I got the amazing opportunity to come to How Stuff Works. And I realized that while I, I joke about never wanting to have been a writer, it was exactly what I needed to be. And it, it was one of the, it was the most fulfilling thing I've ever done as far as any job is considered, so... A marine biologist, huh? Yep. <laughs> I did. I did. That's one I did not know. Uh, Robert, what about you? Well, when I was very little, I wanted to be a mad scientist when I grew up, but I quickly learned that this was uh, not really a profession that existed, and uh, I ended up sort of getting away from interest in science uh, for a, a while there. But uh, from a very, from a pretty early age, I always wanted to be a writer, and uh, and so I continued to chase that uh, dream even when it was uh, was far from employable. I ended up going into to journalism. I ended up uh, teaching English at a high school, um, the high school I graduated from, actually, and uh, which was which was really weird. And uh, and eventually uh, landed the job at How Stuff Works, and have uh, loved it ever since. So I mean, I, I love getting to uh, to write for a living, and then fill my free time uh, whenever I find it with uh, you know, working on fiction as well. So uh, I feel like I'm. Uh, even with all this podcasting and video stuff, I'm a writer uh, foremost. That's what I am, and all this other stuff is just uh, stuff that has grown out of that, I guess. Hey, Ben, can I say, too, uh, and this is not sucking up, but I think everyone out there who's watching should know that the people on this panel here are all tremendous writers, and um, I think that's kind of hats off to our, our bosses at work who did the interviewing to begin with, they really managed to assemble like, and um, you know, we don't get to write articles as much as we used to, but um, I mean, Jonathan Conger, uh, uh, Strickland, sorry, I said Jonathan Strickland, <laughs> Josh and Robert, I mean, everyone is like stellar, stellar writers, and so that's kind of the beginning of it all, I think, for all of us. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chuck, because I started out um, for most too, of my Benny. life. Oh, thanks, buddy. For most of my life, I wanted to be a writer, but uh, previously, I also had some uh, some short-lived dreams of things. The first job I ever remember having is that I wanted to be a werewolf astronaut because I thought I had it all figured out, right? Because werewolves change in the full moon, and if you're on the moon as an astronaut, I mean, you get the picture. But uh, just like Robert's mad science dream, it turns out that it might be kind of tough to, uh, to get it... Um, to get it actually becoming a paying gig. So far, um, we've got some people who want to ask us some questions live, guys. Do you want to try that out? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah? Okay. So uh, we've got uh, Marin. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Miss? Marin Chesney, M-A-I-R-I-N. We're going to bring her live in just one moment. She's there. Hey, Marin. Hey, you might be muted. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hey. This is my sister. Hi, sister. Hey. Hey. Um, I was no, wondering. Uh, I was wondering what the most memorable podcast episode that you have ever ever recorded is, for good or bad. Um, what's the most memorable episode? That's a good question. Uh, let's see. Uh, does anybody want to start immediately? Otherwise, I'm going to start picking people. I've got one. <laughs> okay. Oh, Josh, you got one? No, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to. I was going to say for the for the bad one. Uh, I would say uh, uh, my tech stuff podcast. I recorded an episode with Chris Paulette, who was my my original co-host, and we recorded an episode about uh, the history of radio, and it was so bad that by the time we finished, we did a full podcast. We sat there for about 45 minutes and recorded this show. 
at the end of it, we just the we're done. We're staring at each other over the microphones. We're dead silent for about thirty seconds. Then we both say, "We can't publish that." So we then went back and recorded it again for another forty-five minutes, and it turned out to be one of the best episodes we've ever done. So that first one though was so terrible that even by the standards that Chris and I had set, we could not publish it. For forward thinking, it's easy. The the best episode on forward thinking so far, from my from my perspective, was uh, holograms because I got to play a character from Star Wars. Granted, it was Princess Leia, but never mind that. It was okay. still the best one. Next. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and go. This is Chuck. Um, I think I'm a I'm a huge fan of the Christmas episodes because um, that's when like. I mean, we always have a good time when we're recording, but there's something about the special Christmas episode when we do that. Josh and I and Jerry are all in, like, a great mood, and it's right before vacation, and then I just have really great memories of recording all of those. Um, I'll handle our worst episode, then. Uh, <laughs> we have one kind of like uh, Strickland was just talking about where uh, it was so bad that we are like, we can't release this. But then we didn't bother to go back and re-record it. We just have it sitting there <laughs> under uh, under glass. It basically says, like, in an emergency, if, like, Chuck breaks a leg or, like, I get hit by a bus or something and we just can't release something one day, there's this one terrible episode. It's on um, animal detectives. And I can't remember. It's been a couple years. I can't remember if it's about detectives that look for animals or animals that act as detectives as well. But either way, it was horrible. It was so it was just terrible. So we just kind of put it off to the side. Uh, Robert, Kristen, do you guys have one? Uh, I can jump in. Um, it's not, it's not uh, terrible or great. It's just kind of gross. Uh, this was an old episode that uh, my first co-host Molly and I did on poop. And at the top of the podcast, we uh, we were like, "Hey, you can make this into a drinking game." and Every time we say poop, you can take a drink of your whatever. And uh, someone wrote in. They had tallied it up, and we said poop 64 times. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So we did that. That's been done. That happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fine. Uh, Robert? Oh, well, let's see. Um, we, we recently did an episode well, in the last year on river blindness, and we worked with the Carter Center about it. And it's uh, it, the organism itself is really fascinating. Uh, the, the efforts that uh, the Carter Center has uh, undertaken to help eradicate it is, uh, is just an, an awesome uh, endeavor. And it, so there's, there's no problem with the subject matter at all, but, but there's absolutely no way that we could really have fun with the topic. You can't really cut any jokes about uh, river blindness and... So uh, that that was probably uh, pretty low on my list of, of episodes. As far as favorites, um, I've enjoyed a couple of episodes that we've done that have had a, a fictional element. Uh, we did one on Mogwai, on the science of gremlins and Mogwai, and how they work if you actually uh, dissect them and try to figure out their anatomy based on real-world uh, biology. And we've uh, recently recorded but not published a similar episode on zombies where we Pretend there's been a zombie outbreak of some kind, but we're uh, analyzing it as if it's a parasitic uh, organism that is uh, causing corpses to, well, not corpses, but living uh, uh, victims to uh, uh, undergo uh, 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 a sort of skin rot that attracts uh, scavenging uh, buzzards or coyotes so that the, the organism can continue its life cycle uh, through another organism. So stuff like that is always really fun. Yeah, I thought that was a really good answer, too. Um, so to, I guess to answer my question, I'll do um, one episode that was a favorite from one show I've done and one that was uh, probably the worst podcast I've ever done yet. Um, so on Stuff They Don't Want You to Know, uh, my co-host Matt and I did a series on a guy named Edward Bernays, and uh, it, was, it was fascinating stuff. Um, I wish we could do more of it. I kind of wish I could meet the guy, uh, but he has a great book that's available for free online called Propaganda, and uh, it's an interesting read if, I guess, you want to learn more about this guy's beliefs. He's, he's called the father of PR, and he did some, um, he had some profound influence uh, both on the way that we sell things to people, we being humans in general, 
and um, whether that's a story or a product. The worst episode that I have ever done was on Car Stuff with my co-host Scott Benjamin. Um, we, I guess, we got a, you know, we were feeling big. We thought we could conquer the world, and we said, let's do an episode on yachts. And we did the whole thing, and then we had that same moment that you're hearing the other podcasters describe, where we just stare at each other across the from, uh, across the table where we record, and then we go, yeah, no, we can't. Like, we can't do this to people who are listening to the show. Who would we be? Um, and then, speaking of uh, that kind of episodes, we've got uh, another live person here. Uh, Eric, do you want to come in and uh, weigh in with your question? Yeah, I, mean, I realize that you guys have way more websites than just stuff you, you, you they don't want you to know. So, sorry, guys, I'll check out your other websites. Uh, but the question was more for you, Ben. I wanted to know... Uh, because I, I love conspiracy stuff too, but more like a guilty pleasure to see, like, you know, it's kind of cool to research different ways of thinking and how crazy the, the things are. I just yeah. wanted to know how much do you actually end up believing what you research, or is it more like just for fun also? Or like, oh, does it, you think it kind of yeah. makes you be paranoid in, in, in everyday life now? Like, you're looking at everything from a different angle? <laughs> that, that's a really good question, Eric. Um, thank you. Uh, to be honest with you, a lot of the stuff that I've researched, we find, we find in the course of the research that there's a, a big confirmation bias for a lot of this stuff, by which I mean uh, somebody has already decided that this version of events or whatever is true, and then they tend to look for things that support that belief. Um, to your question about uh, what I actually believe that I researched, Man, again, I know I'm being redundant, but that Edward Bernays thing, dude, it was pretty cool. And then we also had um, something on the deceptive brain, but uh, that, that was more of a stylized look at neurochemicals and how, how sometimes our brain is not quite the reliable translator uh, of the external world that we believe it is. Um, and then a lot of, a lot of stuff, honestly, um, we tried to present... Uh, the people who say that, you know, obviously this cannot be real, and then the people who say, no, it's real because, you know, insert uh, X, Y, or Z here. Uh, has it made Matt and I more, more paranoid? Arguably so. Uh, I, I have been, uh, I've had a few admittedly fair jokes tossed my way about, uh, about paranoia, and uh you know, they were they were funny. I'm thinking particularly of some that Josh did a couple of times. But uh, I I hope that answers um, I hope that answers your question. We we try to always find uh, new information, and does it change the way I look at the world? Well, yeah. In that, if, if anything, it's made me more skeptical. I mean, critical thought is a is really a skill set. Uh, of different things, and it's tremendously important. And one of the things that has changed, I guess, in my in my personal life about stuff is that the the vast majority of conspiracy theories or nefarious schemes that I that I have run into uh, that seem believable are almost always uh, ideas of of people or group that has uh, a certain amount of power and wants to have more. Um, and I know, I know that sounds crazy, but I haven't seen yet any inarguable proof of ghosts or uh, UFOs. I would be thrilled if I did, um, and I think James Randi would be thrilled too. He has a $1 million prize that is yet to be claimed for any paranormal activity. Um, one thing that did turn out to be real, HSBC and banking scandals. Boom, we did that. And then later it was on The Daily Show, and I looked at Matt, and he did, like, this slow-motion high-five. But we weren't close to each other, so we had to kind of stop across the room. It's not as awkward as it sounded. But does, it, does that answer the question? Yeah, it answers the question. Thank you. And uh, I also wanted to say thanks for not going always too far, like Alex Jones. Like, uh, he's always like, uh, uh, the, the, you know, it's a prison system, and they, they want to put you in a camp and use the guillotines or whatever, and there's none of that stuff in your videos, which I really appreciate, because it just, it's another, just nicely presented just to get you to think a, a little bit differently. <laughs> well, Here. gosh. Well, gosh, thank you. Thank you, Eric. That's, I mean, that makes my day to uh, hear that. 
Uh, that probably will make my co-host Matt today as well. I'm glad we have some witnesses. Um, but <laughs> it, you also said that um, you wanted to uh, check out some of our other uh, podcasts, and I hope you do because a lot of the other shows we have cover some of these things that people might think of as um, conspiratorial, you know, uh, stuff you missed in history class and some stuff, uh, stuff you should know. Uh, it has a great podcast on Atlantis and uh, a lot of stuff to blow your mind incorporates um, some of the things that, again, are, are really fascinating to me. So if you like our little show, uh, Stuff There I Want You to Know, then I promise you, man, you're going to find some really fascinating stuff in every other show. Well, thank you. Maybe even car stuff. Yeah, thank you. All right, so uh, our next question is... Uh, Let's see. Our next question is, what advice could you guys give a new YouTuber? Uh, that's from Gabriel Reyes. Uh, I'd say have a, have, you know, work on your voice for whatever, like, as in what you have to say in your point of view. Make sure that you have a, uh, you know, you've developed that in a way that, that uh, has, that's true to you and has an appeal. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be exactly yourself on camera. Uh, I've seen a lot of YouTubers out there who are kind of, it's kind of their personality but turned up to 11. And I would also say produce as much as you can, as frequently as you can, and be able to do regular updates because the more you're able to do that, the, the easier it is for you to build an audience. If you only put up a video once every few weeks and that you don't do it with any regularity, it's really hard to build momentum. Yeah, totally. That that um that holds up not just for YouTube, but anything podcast, whatever you. Hey guys, <laughs> Josh, Josh, I think you, I think you got yeah. muted. We lost you just for a second. Star Commander, we've lost status. Star Commander. That was gold too. I can't yeah, possibly we, say it again. It got, it got right up to the point of uh, uh, it's not just po videos, but also podcasts and silence. Uh, I was saying that, um, yeah, that holds true for, for YouTube, for podcasts, for anything you're trying to do. If you put something out regularly, uh, it will, uh, the audience will build, basically. Did that come through that time? Yeah. Until... Until... Matter. We until until Ben started typing, and then everything kind of. Went, you know. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, sorry, <laughs> man. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. We've got uh, some more questions. I don't know if we're going to get to all the questions today, guys. Uh, do you want to do like maybe uh, some rapid fire stuff? I think I think maybe we do because uh, we're coming up on an hour here. I think we need to uh, yeah. to maybe get it's maybe maybe one question and then wrap up. Old man Strickland. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go to bed. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's let's find a um, let's find a good one. These are all really great questions, though. Um, dar. Okay. Sorry, guys. I, I want to find like the best. Oh, here we go. Let's end on a uh, personal advice question for a younger person, because as we said, uh, we really like connecting with our listeners here. Uh, Bowen Shu, that's XU, writes in to say, should I live on my own after high school, and how should I prepare for it? Conger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that you should if you could. Um, obviously, uh, if it is financially prudent, then you want to you know, take that into account. But if you have the opportunity to live by yourself, um, I've lived by myself. I'm no longer living by myself, but I'm glad that I lived by myself. Um, basically, like as soon as I could get out of my parents' house, I did. Nothing against my parents. I just wanted to do it. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great experience. It teaches you how to take care of yourself, how to like, you know, cook and clean and I don't know, shower regularly, which you should be doing anyway. Oh, yeah. See, I'm just gonna move right back into my parents' house as soon as this is over. <laughs> Yeah, I think we all just assumed you were already in your parents' house. <laughs> Dude, there's your dad right there. He just walked by. 
Uh, Jonathan, I don't want to freak you out, but I'm also in your parents' house. <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't recognized the room. Uh, yeah. But for, for advice, um, for someone living on their own after high school, uh, I, I would say that living on your own, to Kristen's point, is, is an immensely important experience that everybody should try once, at least if it's financially prudent. Um, how do you prepare for it? Oh, man. I would tend to say don't make it your primary goal. Like, it should be a part of some other goal that's happening in your life that in, in, enables you to live apart. But uh, figure out what the other part of that equation is. That's great advice. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a very good point, too. Well, guys, um, we have... Oh, it looks like... You know what? It looks like we have time for one more question. Do you guys want to do one more? Sure. Okay. All right, so, okay, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. There's so many good questions here. Um, oh, okay, this is one of my favorite questions. I know that some of my coworkers might be tired because I ask this question very, way too often. Uh, MSMS47 writes in to say, I know this sounds a little random, uh, but it helps me to know the personalities of other people better. Uh, my question is, what superpower would you want to have? Um, do you want to start with? Do you want to start, Jonathan? Sure. Uh, time control. <laughs> Easy. Time control, uh, because uh, that way, every time I'm in a debate and I say something that I realize I shouldn't have said, I can go back and fix it. I mean, I could do other stuff too, but mostly I just want to make sure I'm always right. So uh, time control would definitely help me out. Also, that would allow me to go back and really see in the little uh, conversations I have with my wife what it was I actually said. Because she, she seems to have a perfect memory that does not match up to what I consider to be reality. So this would actually let me go back and check that for <laughs> well, I think I, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I would like the superpower to win... Every debate against Jonathan Strickland, especially technology related. Curses you! <laughs> All right, who's next? good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah. Good game, you guys. Good game. Uh, Chuck, what do you think? Uh, I would like uh, the pure power of the ninja to go through my fists. <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought that about you. Um, All right, Robert. Superpower. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'll go with flying. It's uh, it's boring, but you know, it'll get you places. That is know. not boring. How jaded do we do? Boring. Are we? Like I mean, flying is boring. <laughs> well, because they'll buy my house right now. <laughs> <laughs> but the, well, I mean, think, I mean, think yeah. of all the superheroes who already fly. It's like it's a, it's busy up there. You're just gonna smack into other dudes in capes. <laughs> yeah, but but also like what kind of flying? Would it be flying the same way that people swim? Like would it be I physical? I think it exercise? would be like Gamera, where I would I would uh, pull my legs into my torso and then fire would come out uh, in out of my leg holes <laughs> and then I would oh, launch okay. myself up into uh, into the air and into space that way. Well, yeah, well that I mean that just makes sense. That's science right there, isn't it? Um, sure is. Josh, what about uh, you? I would say I'd either like turn into form of water or ice or water vapor, something like that, or I get um, be able to get huge like Apache Chief. So, so for super friends, you'd either be Apache Chief or one of the Power Twins. I'd be both of the, the Wonder Twins. All right, gotcha. Wonder Twins, I apologize. And Strickland would be your Gleek? Geek? What was the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> was, that uh, the, was that the white blob? The, the shapeless blob? Oh, think, what was oh, his name? Yeah. The yellowish creature. Mm -hmm. Right. With just eyes, basically. And it had like a, yeah. a couple of kids, I think. Maybe the dad. Yeah, or but, what was that? But he had a really sweet personality. I, I, don't, that. I don't like where any of this is going. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to, we have to wrap it up. Speaking of going, um, <laughs> I, guess, I guess I would say uh, that if I were lucky enough to have a superpower, it would be to be uh, completely invulnerable, and I think I would just use it to wander around places that people aren't usually able to go, uh, unprotected, deep sea vents, space. It would probably get 
I don't know. It'd be kind of fun. I, I would like to think I would fight crime, but I would probably just awkwardly show up and try to fight crime and, <laughs> and be there. I guess I would be like the bullet shield. Um, so this is the end of our Google Hangout, guys. It's our first ever. Um, thank you so much for coming in and asking us questions. Uh, Man, and Eric, thank you for uh, coming live and asking us these questions. And uh, I think we are going to go ahead and head out until next time. So uh, I I enjoyed this. Uh, fellow podcasters, what did you guys think? It was great. Hey, yeah. a great hey, job, Ben. ben. Yeah, way to go, Ben. I've got a great idea, Ben. What? Ben, i got a great idea. Let's, let's all go around and talk about our YouTube channel really quickly. Oh, yes. That is what we should do. <laughs> Thank you for saying <laughs> There, Jonathan. Uh, why, why don't you start? <laughs> My show's Forward Thinking, so go to YouTube. It's FW Thinking. It is awesome. We update uh, once a week on ours, and um, it's a lot of fun. We talk about the future. We talk about things that we need to uh, think about for the future, and we talk about some of the amazing possibilities that are right around the corner. I'm having a fantastic time doing this, this series, uh, and I really am proud of it, so check it out. Uh, and Robert, I understand you have a YouTube channel as well? Yes, uh, Julie and I of uh, Stuff to Blow Your Mind have the Stuff to Blow Your Mind YouTube channel. You can find it uh, by looking for our address, uh, Mind Stuff Show. And uh, we publish currently three times a week. We do a series called uh, Epic Science, where it's just uh, me or Julie sharing some, uh, some crazy science that is... Uh, uh, risen to the surface in our own research for the podcast or for our blogs. And then we also do one, a Science on the Web, where we take uh, a viral video that we find, something that's kind of interesting or weird or stupid, and then we explain the science behind it. We'll throw in some additional clips, so, uh, you know, something from movies, something from other viral videos that are of interest. And, uh, and we're looking to unroll some, uh, some additional uh, video types in the future. Nice. And uh, Josh and Chuck, you guys are a duo on YouTube, famously. Take it, Clark. Uh, okay, so on our YouTube channel, we have all sorts of stuff. We have um, an animated version of the podcast. It's like little five-minute shorts ripped from the podcast and then uh, animated by a guy who's never met us in person. And he just, like, nails the little details, like eyebrow raises and, like, pregnant pauses. They're really great. Um, then on Tuesdays we have something called This Day in History, and uh, it's pretty much just like a straight up on this date, this happened. And then we kind of buttress it with other interesting, unexplained things. Um, let's see, there's Don't Be Dumb, which is something that uh, I do, which is uh, basically just me sitting there busting a myth, if you will, or um, uh, explaining something that seems complex but isn't. Uh, and then Chuck does uh, elevator movie reviews that are coming out, um, and they're awesome. Where basically he uh, he does a, a good movie review in an elevator very quickly, and uh, and then also we have something called uh, Trapped in a Meeting, which stars um, pretty much almost all of the uh, How Stuff Works podcasters, um, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool when it comes out. So all that's on our YouTube channel. It's uh, Josh and Chuck, the YouTube channel. <laughs> And uh, Kristen Conger, also, yes. you, have, you have a YouTube channel, right? I do have a YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash stuff mom never told you. And it is me three times a week in my apartment. <laughs> and uh, one of them is uh, Dear Mom, where I talk to a photo of my mom, kind of more about, like, my life experiences and, uh, you know, um, lady stuff. Um, I have Professor Boyfriend, in which I bring my boyfriend on to uh, kind of have a, a male perspective on gender issues, relationships, all that good stuff. And then we have Stuff Dad Never Told You, in which I take uh, topics from the podcast and kind of reorient them towards male viewers to give them more insight into stuff like, I don't know, high heels, Pinterest, bras, etc. So it's YouTube.com. Com slash stuff mom never told you. You'll laugh at least once, I promise. <laughs> and uh, for the record, stuff uh, dad never told you has given me some very valuable life advice. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I know. I needed the help. Um, so uh, I am on a show called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know, 
with my excellent co-host Matt. Uh, we have uh, a lot of stuff on there and uh, some new surprises coming out. I don't want to spoil it other than to say uh, go to youtube.com slash conspiracy stuff and you can learn more. Before we go out, I want to give a huge thanks in public. Jonathan, you saved me. I appreciate it. I can't believe I almost went out without talking about our shows. That's okay. It's okay. It's what I, I'm, I'm the king of self-promotion. <laughs> um, so we're going to head out, you guys. This time, I really mean it. Thank Bye, you everybody. so much for hanging out. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you for hanging out.